Good morning, everybody, and welcome to The Balancing Act. We are so glad you joined us. I'm Julie Moran. And I'm Olga Villaverde. Today, we continue our special series on rehabilitation hospitals and how they're helping so many people get back on their feet. And May means Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> A flavorful taste of the nation's coming up as we create delicious recipes with tortillas. Love. Yeah. Julie, we can enjoy them all, all year, all year. round. We gotta yeah. sing. Ay, 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 ay. I almost got it. All I right. Her. <laughs> the balancing act starts right now. <laughs> Our Health Matters series continues this morning with the second in a four-part series about the important work being done at inpatient rehabilitation hospitals. In fact, once again, I am on location at Health South, one of the premier inpatient rehabilitation hospitals in the country with over 100 hospitals nationwide. And I'm joined once again by Dr. Dexan Cloen, Health South's Chief Medical Officer, and Dr. Cheryl Miller, National Director of Therapy Operations. Ladies, thank you so so much for joining me again. Thank you. Great Glad to it. see you. You know, Doctor, last time we spoke a lot about Health South. I'd like to remind our viewers once again what exactly it is. It's a system of hospitals where rehabilitation medicine is practiced. So a system of rehabilitation hospitals. We have 107 in 29 states in Puerto Rico. And who should consider a stay at a rehabilitation hospital? A person who needs to be an inpatient, mm -hmm. in other words, they're not well enough to go home and have outpatient therapy, who has complex needs, who needs more than one type of therapy, so they may need physical therapy and speech therapy or and occupational therapy or all three. Dr. Miller, how does rehabilitation work exactly? Well, rehabilitation is a special field of medicine, as Dr. Cloen has said in the past, and um, we're really focused on restoring independence and function after a major illness or injury for our patients. And the, I think the thing that's special about rehabilitation is it's provided by an interdisciplinary team. So in our hospitals, typically a patient will be treated each day not only by a rehabilitation nurse, but also by physical therapists, occupational therapists, speech therapists, and many other people on the team. And there are so many stories here, patients that have come in and left and, and reached their goal. I'd like to share one with our viewers of one young patient, and let's hear what she has to say, shall we? Great. Let's do that. Coming from ICU and then telling, they told me I was going to have three um, hours of therapy every day, so I was really nervous. But everyone did their best to like kind of ease my nerves, tell me it was okay. They really kind of made me feel like they were going to take care of me as if I was like their own and just like made me feel really welcome and like things are going to be okay. Now I love hearing stories like that, Dr. Miller. Tell me exactly what a typical day is like here. A typical day in rehabilitation starts very early in the morning. Our patients get up bright and early. They um, start their normal day. They start to do their simple self-care and wash their face and get ready for the day. Um, but a really important thing, and I think a, a, a differentiator in rehabilitation, is that they get dressed in regular street clothes, no hospital gowns here in Health South. Mm. And then we start their therapy process. So uh, during the day, they'll typically get about three hours or more of therapy per day. And that's, that's all based on their individual needs, some physical therapy, some occupational therapy, some speech therapy. And another really important part about rehabilitation is providing adequate rest periods in between these therapies so that they can continue to tolerate and progress through the rehabilitation process. Dr. Cologne, would you like to add something? She's talked to you about the busy day with therapy, but there's also another 21 hours of the day that uh, lots of other services are taking place for our patients. So they're seen by physicians, they're taken care of by nurses, many of whom have specific skills for rehabilitation. There's a certification called a Certified Rehabilitation Registered Nurse that many of our nurses have achieved. We're very proud of that. We have case managers, we have all sorts of people as part of this team. It's really a team process to help a patient meet that patient's personal goals. And how long does it take that patient to meet the goal? For example, how long does a patient stay here, Dr. Miller? Well, every patient is very individual. It's based on their individual illness or injury. We also track our length of stays on average for all of our patients, and that's about 13.2 days uh, is how long a patient will stay for their rehabilitation at Health South. 
And I was actually expecting a little bit more, Dr. Cloen. We know that patients don't want to spend any more time in a hospital than they have to, so we try to be very active and very um, intensive in getting people better as fast as we can. But it's personalized, some people stay much longer, some a little shorter. I can only imagine it's bittersweet because you're helping this patient, you become close to them, but you want to see them go too. Uh, any thoughts on that, doctor? It's a little like seeing one of your own children graduate. You are very invested in them. You're a little sorry to see them go off, but you're so proud, so exciting. It's one of the very gratifying aspects of rehabilitation medicine. And our patients frequently, when they go out the door, uh, they come back later, not as a patient again, oh. but they come back later to thank the staff. They come to reunions. It is extremely exciting. Before we go, is anybody leaving today? We have uh, someone going home today, and it's always exciting when that happens. Usually the staff celebrates a bit. Patients and families are very proud. I saw a patient earlier today who was standing up and recently he told me he was not expected to live. Oh. And so these are the kinds of stories that make it a pleasure for us to come to work every day. God bless them. Thank you mm -hmm. so much for what you do. Thank you. Do appreciate. Thank you for sharing that story yeah. with me. And we'll see you again to talk more about Health South. What's that website one more time for patients or even family members out there that need that help? HealthSouth.com. HealthSouth.com. Ladies, thank you so much again. And as always, if you want to learn more, just head to our website. It's really easy. It's thebalancingact.com, thebalancingact.com. We're also on Facebook and Twitter. We always love to hear from you. They're referred to as GMOs or genetically modified organisms and with so much public discussion of GMOs and GMO labeling, we started wondering what really are GMOs and what do they mean for American women. To find out, we turned to our friends at Common Ground, an organization bringing together the women who grow food with those who buy it. And bringing that conversation right to the breakfast table and beyond this morning is Julie Kenny, an Iowa farmer as well as a volunteer for Common Ground. So great to have you in the studio. Thanks for having me. All right, before we start, uh, tell me a little bit more about yourself and Common Ground. Uh, I'm a fifth generation farmer along with my husband. Uh, we farm in Iowa and we have um, primarily corn and soybeans um, and also we're raising two little kids. So at any time on the farm you might find them helping us plant corn and soybeans or nurturing those crops throughout the growing season or riding in the combine at the end of the year. So it's a, it's a very fun family farm. And Common Ground, you volunteer for them. I do, yeah, it's a great opportunity. You know, I recognize as a mom that um, I'm fortunate to have access to a farm and see how food is grown today, but not everybody has that access. So I think it's important to um, help describe what's going on and answer questions that consumers might have. So that's really the goal and the mission of that organization. Julie, we hear so much about GMOs and, and a lot of people really don't know what they are. Could you just explain it in kind of layman's term for me and our viewers? Sure, sure. So. Farmers and gardeners have been improving seeds and plants for centuries and genetic modification or, or GMOs is really kind of the modern version of that where um, we take that process of improving the seeds into the lab and what it results in is, is really a more accurate and precise way of improving those plants. So some of the benefits that we've seen today is you know protection against insects or diseases or some of the common challenges that we might have right. on our farm. But I'm really excited about some of the benefits to come, like improved nutrition of the food that we produce, those kind of things, really exciting times. Let's examine in greater detail some of the myths surrounding GMOs, the short list, food allergies, ADD, cancer. What is the research showing? You know, most people don't realize that these products have been on the market for about two decades. Really? And before they even come to the market, they're really, really thoroughly tested and, and researched. And, you know, as a mom who's not only growing these products, but also feeding them to my children, it's really important to me to know that they are the most thoroughly researched foods on, on the market today and have proven to be just as safe as, as all the other products available to us. Now, both organic foods and GMO uh, foods use pesticides and, and insecticides. And what's most important when it comes to safety? And, and also, I think some people sometimes think organic doesn't use any pesticides. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's also a common misconception. So both organic farmers and conventional farmers like ourselves have access to insecticides and pesticides. And it's just one of the tools that we use to help protect those plants. Um, but as farmers, you know, we're always looking to continuous improvement. So how can we grow as much as possible, be as productive as possible, but also use those resources in a really responsible manner? And the GMO technology has allowed us to do that. 
what's the most important thing that you want to share with women out there and maybe specifically moms out there? Yeah, I think there are a ton of questions about food and farming. And as a farmer, I think that's really exciting. Um, I invite those questions. And that's really the main reason that I volunteer my time with Common Ground. I think it's a great opportunity for not just myself, but other farm women from across the country to share what's going on on farms today and help answer some of those burning questions. And we've got a great website. Okay, that's the viewers I want to know. Yep, Where can they yep. find you? Find our Common Ground. Com, and it's a great opportunity to connect with farmers like myself and maybe ask some of those burning questions we haven't talked about today. Well, I just want to thank you and all the farmers and ranchers out there that just provide us with, and America has the safest, tastiest, healthiest food in the world. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and if you'd like additional information on GMOs, you're invited for some nutritious nuggets at thebalancingact.com or send us your fresh food ideas, share your thoughts or questions on Facebook forward slash The Balancing Act fans. Excited Cinco de Mayo, one of my favorite holidays because it means fun, music, and best of all, mm, great food. And what better way to celebrate than taco night at home with the family? Here to share her tips on how to elevate your meal is culinary consultant, cookbook author, and chef Jill Hauk. Good morning. Hey Olga, how Buenos are you? Buenos dias. Buenos dias to you too. You know what is served every Tuesday at Mi Casa, my house? I'm guessing tacos. Taco Tuesday. <laughs> Taco Tuesday, I love it. So I am so excited you're here this morning. And I, my producer was telling me earlier that you make the best tacos because you have a secret weapon. I sure do. What is it? I start with tortilla land, uncooked tortillas. And, and these, why is that? They're so special. They come in the refrigerated section because they are without any kind of preservatives. It's five all natural ingredients and you cook them fresh to order. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. And what I love about tortillas is you really can use them for a lot of things, not just a taco. Oh my goodness, no, but let's get cooking. All right, let's do that. So what we're gonna do is I start with my tortilla land uncooked tortillas. Okay. And I've got a nice hot pan here. And in 60 seconds, we're going to have a wonderful fresh hot tortilla. So you're actually cooking these as opposed to me grabbing those off the counter. What makes this, I guess, a little bit more special? This is more special because it's cooked to order. Oh. The ones at the counter have been cooked and they're delicious, but these are cooked fresh and so they're nice and hot and you're ready to make a taco with them. I like that. And you also mentioned some all natural ingredients. What are those? Stuff that you find in your own kitchen. Really? So flour, water, oil, sugar, salt, Mm. ingredients that you've got on hand all the time. All right, you're making me really hungry. So you've got a great spread. Tell yes. me what you have here. So let's make some tacos. Okay, here, I'm gonna give one for you. Thank you, Olga. And one for me. So while we're making our tacos, I'm gonna flip over the Tortilla Land tortilla, and this is where the magic <gasps> happens. It gets all nice and puffed up. This is fun to do with the kids. It's cute. They just love these. And, you know, of course, you have to supervise them as you're doing this, but what's the fun about taco night is that you can put on everything you want. Oh it's a way gosh. to make the whole family happy. All right, so, so we've got chicken. I'm gonna put a little bit of this. And I'm gonna put some corn on. And you know that tortilla land tortillas are great for other foods as well. So I'll make a homemade pizza night where everybody is using a tortilla as an individual pizza crust. And let me tell you, I'll make tuna salad and I'll use a tortilla. Right? Oh, that is That's delicious. Not, bad. not at all. You can even make desserts. So if you have some chocolate and some fruit, everything is just so delicious. I've never tried these tortillas, so I'm going to tell you right now that I think I'm ready to go because right now everybody's going out there going, man, this woman can oh eat. Oh my goodness. All right, let me see the difference and let me taste real quick. Mmm, they're so soft. Aren't they wonderful? And that's the difference between a cooked to order, fresh, beautiful tortilla land tortilla. And right now we're using the flour variety, but we also have corn and cheesy. So you can put those out with your taco night spread, or you can put them out with whatever you're cooking, whether it be breakfast, dessert, or lunch. I love it. Let me tell you, and my kids are going to love this because when I pack lunches, I can actually make them a ham and cheese sandwich and just put a little tortilla on and change, change out that bread, right? Absolutely. Mm. And it's like a little hug. You've got the tortilla that's hugging the ingredients, and your kids are just going to love it. You, you know who else is going to love this? I have to do this. My producer, he's married to a gorgeous Latina. Her name is Rosie. And Chris, get over here. I know you love tacos, so I'm not gonna make you bite off my side, but- I'm in taco heaven right now. You are, take a bite, <laughs> okay, my friend. Here, I go. here you go. 
I love this man. He'll do anything for me. Mm. Go ahead, say, que rico. Isn't he handsome too? <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Okay, I want my kids to eat these tortillas, so where can I get them? Go to the tortillaland.com website. Easy. We have a product locator. Oh. You put in your address, and it'll tell you what retail stores to buy them at. But we're at Costco, Walmart, Kroger, Meyer, and Safeway. <laughs> and if you'd like to learn how to spice up your meal, visit us at thebalancingact.com or share some of your favorite tortilla recipes by logging on to Facebook forward slash The Balancing Act fans. Okay, I'm going to take another bite. This is divine. Well, it's almost time to start the day. Hope you make it a great one. Let's go eat some tortillas. Let's do it all year, all year long, every day. Remember to check our website, thebalancingact.com. You can find lots more information there. We're also on Twitter and Facebook. Follow us, like us, tweet us, be social. Yes, we're going to eat tortillas. Until next time, remember, find your balance. So long, everybody. With lots of hot sauce.